Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog. I'm currently on my way to our Lord and Savior, Barnes and Noble. There's no point in being around the bush. You guys already know what we'll be reading. The Six of Crows duology. This has been highly requested and I think it's about time we do something to initiate this fantasy era that everyone else seems to be in currently. I believe that I'm missing out on a genre that has great reading potential. It is currently Monday, November 21st, the first official day of my Thanksgiving break. My college gets a whole week off. It's quite lovely. That is also why I'm not driving my baby. William. That's my Jeep. I don't have him with me right now and I miss him dearly. I don't think one fantasy series in particular has caused this like recent influx in the love for the fantasy genre, but I do know that even some non-fantasy readers really enjoy the Six of Crows duology, so I thought I'd give it a go, see what happens. I just want it to be my fantasy era already. Patience is a virtue, Sarah. I gotta pick up the duology first because apparently it would be a crime to make a reading vlog using books I already own. I will see you guys at Barnes. Okay, I am back from Barnes and surprisingly I was very good. I only got what I went for, but there were some buy 150 deals that were very tempting. I used to be anti-box set, but I can't deny how satisfying it is to buy a whole series at once. Let's slice this bad boy open. Jeez, that sounded cruel. I'm definitely putting the box with both of the books in it on my shelf when I'm done with them. Here they are. We have Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows. Obviously, Six of Crows is first. This is like my first time ever like looking at the book. I really don't know much about this book. Other than that, I believe the characters go on a heist. I do love myself a good adventure movie, especially the Oceans franchise. Oh, those movies are the best. Sandra Bullock and Oceans 8 slayed. Okay, I'm just gonna read the synopsis so we kind of have an idea what we're going into. Um, You know it's a bad sign when you can't even pronounce the first word. <laughs> Ketterdam, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price. And no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Breaker. Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that can make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged pass, a spy known as the Wraith? R Wraith? Wraith? A heart trender using her magic to survive the slums. A thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Cass's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. <laughs> this is literally sounding like the fantasy version of the Oceans movies. I'm really excited. I don't think I've read a fantasy since The Cruel Prince, which I read before I started making booktube videos, so that was a while ago. Oh my god, that's so pretty. That would make for like a really cool tattoo. Let's get started. I'm like sitting on scissors. <laughs> we have a map. So far, so good. I love artwork and books. Part one, shadow business. 8 a.m. I couldn't fall asleep again. Been overthinking all the little things I've said. I'm sleep deprived almost every night. And I wish that I wouldn't think instead. I know the sun is up and I got things to do. Did Charlie make any of your videos when you were in, uh... And she was in Harrisburg with you? Yeah, she was in my spooky 24-hour readathon. She was? Uh-huh. I'll have to watch that. Yeah, she made multiple appearances. Did she? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you for the kissy. Sarah, in case you don't know, I really love you. <laughs> Hi vlog. It is day two. I'm about 120 pages in. As for my first impressions go, I'm not really sure how I feel. On one hand, I'm really enjoying how the story is unpredictable and different from my usual reads, but then on the other hand, some parts have me doing mental gymnastics. I have to keep rereading sections, even though there's still a 50% chance I will be confused. So I I can't read this book like easy breezy. I have to be more attentive than usual, but this might just be a thing that gets easier over time as one reads more fantasy. Do I understand half of what the characters are saying? No. But am I pushing through it, hoping that something will miraculously click and I'll be able to understand the language? Yes. I have kind of gotten not bored per se, but I've had this yearning inside of me recently for books that are completely different from my typical genres. This is definitely surfing on that front. It's kind of like a book vacation. All right.
I think the power just went out. Well, I was about to say back to reading. Change of plans. I don't like the power going out. I was just filming my reading update and the power went out. I was doing classwork. Why did the power go out? It's not pretty really windy, is it? Okay, now back to reading. But I don't think about the energy to move And I go back to the dreams again But I shouldn't be sleeping when It's still right now and I'm stuck in my bed Still right now and I'm stuck in my head Cause I've been just not a So currently Kaz, the main leader of this gang called the Dregs, has just finished acquiring all of his members for this heist. I won't go into too many specifics since I'm trying to make this vlog spoiler free, but Mateus or Matias, we're gonna go with Mateus. One of the members is really suspicious of everyone else and he keeps referring to Kaz as the demon, which I just found so funny. It reminded me of a nickname I have for my parents' dog, not Charlie. She's a little sweetheart angel. The other one who let's just say is a bit fickle. Um, it's getting a little gory. Hello, I didn't know I signed up for a horror novel, but what just happened sounded like it hurt a lot. I was reading and going like, Also, remember when I said that I thought this would make a cool tattoo? Well, call me a psychic, because we just learned that all members of the dregs have a tattoo with a crow and a cup on it. So I think we can put two and two together and assume that that's the tattoo they're all referencing. It's Thanksgiving, y'all. I'm about to do some festive makeup, if time permits. I might have stayed up reading last night and thus woke up late. Oh, I also did my nails. This shade of green is like my favorite color. I love it. Also, I thought I'd show you guys my package I received from Huda Beauty yesterday. They were having an 80% off sale. I know, right? If you're telling me I only have to pay 20% of the retail price, I'm gonna say yes, please add to cart. I kind of forgot what I ordered, so this is kind of like Christmas. Christmas on Thanksgiving. And yes, I'm gonna give you guys a reading update here in a minute, but for any of my makeup lovers out there, cute. <sighs> I've never ordered from Huda before, but I'm loving this experience. <laughs> okay, I got the Multi-Do Skin Tint, the Balm Brows Eyebrow Pencil. This was literally $5. <gasps> Five dollars. They can practically steal my money at this point. I got two of their new glowish blushes, one in Milky Rose and the other one in Zero One Healthy Peach. You know me, I couldn't decide which color I liked better. <laughs> the Tantor, along with the brush. I've been wanting to try out these products. Makeup testing is a hobby of mine. Some might say it's a peculiar hobby, but I find testing different formulas out fun, okay? I need to get my contacts in. All right, reading update. Guys, I'm actually really enjoying the book so far. I know, right? Who is she? Yeah, I was a little worried there at the start. I initially thought I wasn't cut out for fantasy because of all the world building and everything. And you know, I'd rather not read books that make me feel dumb. Typically, I like to know what's going on right off the bat or else I fear that I'll never know what's going on. But I think once I accepted that yes, I may be a little confused at some parts and that I'll just have to be patient for answers to my questions, I now see the appeal to the fantasy genre. It is refreshing to read something that's completely different from reality. I'm gonna try out the Tantor. I am not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. I've now hit the 300 page mark and someone better catch me because I am falling for these characters. The character development, I'm loving learning about these characters' backstories and how they ended up in their current living situation. And although all of their lives are so different, they have come together to complete this mission. There is definitely some strong found family themes in this book. I am sensing, as of right now, two different romances brewing. A friends to lovers one and then a enemies to friends to lovers to enemies to lovers one. I will never say no to a romance. And that's not true. I will never say no to a romance that makes the story better, but if a romance is added to a book as an afterthought or there's just no chemistry between the characters, then I will happily pass. Damn, who is she? She's looking tan. Okay, the Tantor is already getting my stamp of approval. This is taking me back to my beauty guru days. I'm so excited to get back to this book, which is definitely a really good sign. Oh my God, this is so pretty. <laughs> I'll probably be able to finish it today around the Thanksgiving festivities. I actually did plan on reading When in Rome today, but I know I won't be able to finish a whole novel in a day. And then I would be in the middle of three books because I paused reading Kiss the Sky so I could read this duology. And I just don't think adding a third book to that list is the move. I don't know, I'm still trying to decide what to do. It's so weird. I remember reading so vividly The Love Hypothesis last Thanksgiving. What did I read over the other major holidays? I couldn't tell ya. So either my other holiday reads weren't very memorable 
or the love hypothesis was exceptionally memorable. Maybe a bit of both. Anyways, I think that is gonna be it for right now. I have, oh my God, I have an, I have an hour. I'm gonna be late to my own Thanksgiving. I will see you guys the next time I see you. helping cleaning up. As much as you can. And now that my coffee shop is it? closed, I can't find Why a I place for a good cappuccino. But you should have Sarah make you one of hers, Sherry. I do make the best cappuccinos. <laughs> No, I always say about cappuccinos, I like it when I have to, someone else makes it for the me and I'm spending a lot of money free. for it. Oh. oh my gosh. It sat down. Uh -huh. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Charlie. I'm now sensing a third romance of brewing. I'm not 100% sure yet, but one of the characters did say that they liked flirting with another character. So come on, there has to be something there. Coincidence or not, this book is titled Six of Crows and it is separated into six parts. Hey vlog, I just wrapped up filming my ultimate holiday bookish gift guide, which most of you have probably already seen, if not, Update on the reading, I have finished Six of Crows and I am two chapters into Crooked Kingdom. I haven't had much time to read this weekend, so I'm not that far into it yet. I ended up giving Six of Crows four stars. I really enjoyed the large adventure element in the book along with the engaging character development. Some parts were a bit predictable, but that's YA for you. But I will say that any plot that involved the character Kaz, I didn't see coming. That one sure is an unpredictable bird. I can't say that this book would be good for anyone who hasn't read fantasy. This is a book that is best to read in big and opposed to spread out over a period of time or else you'll probably be lost in the plot. This afternoon I am packing up and heading back to my apartment so I suspect I won't get in much reading time either today. Though this upcoming week I will be able to give this book more attention around the numerous essays I have to write. I know, lovely. Just you know college student things. Hi, it's a hot minute later and I am arts and crafting. So great time for a little bookish chit chat. I'm also listening to the audiobook, How to Kill Your Family. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. This is a thriller, not a how-to book. It's actually kind of ironic that I'm listening to that book while I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, yeah, I should be reading Crooked Kingdom, but I can't paint and read at the same time. I may be many things, but a multitasker reader is not one of them. And sometimes when you're reading fantasy, at least for me, it's good to have a little break and read something that will cleanse your palate. Oh, what am I painting? Thank you very much for asking. Let me backtrack and give you some context. So every Christmas, I give my brother a funny gift. One year I gave him a $5 electric crappy toothbrush. Last year I gave him a in the shower head scrubber thing. That was a good one. So this year I had the revelation that I should gift him an iconic EOS lip balm to dry out his lips. Haha <laughs> tea. But this gift is going to be more of an actual small gift than a joke gift. It still is partially a joke but I am painting, well at least I'm going to paint, a little capital symbol on top. I have it on my phone here because he is a big capitals fan so why not right? This is going to be a one of a kind piece of capitals merchandise. Um, so you're welcome, Michael. Also, as you guys saw, I put my Christmas decorations up. We are practically celebrating two holidays in this vlog. I swear the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas gets shorter and shorter each year. Anyways, I've read about three-fourths of Crooked Kingdom. I did notice that both books begin with a chapter that has nothing to do with the characters we follow. So then when you read the second chapter, you're thrown off balance a little bit. Wondering how the first chapter relates to the overall story. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I may need to like rethink my Christmas gift. Maybe this will actually be a joke gift. <laughs> you do eventually figure out how the first chapter relates after 200 pages. In Six of Crows, we focused more on the overall heist, whereas in Crooked Kingdom, the characters go on smaller adventures, let's call them. <laughs> so in the first book, you kind of knew what the overall end goal was, but in this one, I'm not really sure where we're heading. But I have a feeling that wherever we're going, it's going to like affect the kingdom at large. I am purposely being very vague here. I liked the plot of the first one, 
better, but I'm enjoying the reading experience of Crooked Kingdom more now that I actually understand the world and the magic system. And now that I've formed a solid relationship to the characters, I absolutely love painting. It's so relaxing. I'll of course insert a photo of my custom EOS lip balm when I finished it. So I'm going to continue working on this and hopefully my next clip will be when I finish the book. This book has literally taken me a whole week to read, but sometimes it just has to be that way. Can we get a round of applause for finishing this duology? Thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. Stop it. No, really. It was my pleasure. 530 pages later and I finished Crooked Kingdom. It was great. I gave it four stars as well. The characters have my heart. The adventures felt like we were there with them. The romance was cute. It was pretty slow burn, but still cute. Oh, I've been meaning to talk about how supposedly you're supposed to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy before Six of Crows, but I've also heard that that's not really necessary. They do take place in the same universe, the Grishaverse. Other than that, I'm not really sure how the series relate. You guys probably know more than me, but I kind of see it as when slash if I choose to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, I will be less confused. These books were a bit of a struggle to get through at times, but I think due to the immersive reading experience, I will be thinking about these books for the foreseeable future. I need this duology to turn into a Quintology Le Bardugo. You know what? Throughout this vlog, I've learned that I not only can thoroughly enjoy fantasy books, but more impactfully, I think heist books may be my new thing. I may not be my fantasy era yet, but I've entered my heist era. If y'all have any other heist book recs, let your girl know. Okay, my favorite character. I think it's gonna have to be Jesper. I love him all though. <laughs> Jesper was such a fun character to read from. He was a little cocky, but in a fun loving way, but he also had these struggles that you wish you could help him overcome. If you're thinking about reading the series, the winter would be a perfect time to start since literally half of Six of Crows takes place in a snowy setting. Just picture snowy mountains with wolves and an ice court. It was a vibe. That is gonna be it for this vlog. I had a blast reading these books with y'all. Hope you did as well. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me and my channel out a lot. You know, the drill you can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on the Six of Crows duology down in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.